Hello, welcome back to another 90 Day Fiance recap. Let's talk about season five, episode 19 of The Other Way. This was a really good episode, so I just want to get right into it. So cue the intro song. We are obsessed with TLC and all the trashy reality TV. It's, it's a, a recap. recap. It's a recap. It's a Let's start with Kim and TJ, cause she is an official wife. And now it's time for Indian wifey school with mother-in-law and brother-in-law. They have a family meeting with Kim to kinda set the rules in place. So mother-in-law is like, by the way, Kim, you can't live like you used to anymore. You can't just do whatever the hell you want, whenever the hell you want, however the hell you want. No, now you're the quote manager of the household. So you're going to be doing everything. Okay, you're gonna be taking care of the whole family. You're gonna be cooking, you're gonna be cleaning, you're gonna be cooking, and then you're gonna be cleaning. You're gonna to have to follow certain rules. For example, there should never be any dishes left in the sink. And Kim's like, oh, I'll be the one cooking, so you're gonna do the dishes, right? And they're like, no, that's not how it works here, sweetie. You're gonna be doing everything. And Kim's like, oh no, 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 no. I hate doing the dishes. That's like so gross. It's so disgusting. Oh my God, <laughs> dishes make me want to throw up because they've been in everybody's mouths. It gets all this different food and it gets disgusting and it, ugh. I don't know. Dishes yeah. just gross me out. Okay, sir. Okay, you will manage me and your food. Just make a small amount for you, a small one for me. I would like to be able to learn a bunch of recipes, like for you guys making lunch, I'd like to be able to help in everything. She will teach you. Now it's time for mother-in-law to teach Kim some of their family's favorite recipes. And I don't know what Kim had that morning, but she is unusually calm. Like, so calm, so zen, and kind of positive. After the family meeting is over, TJ and Kim go upstairs, and we learn that TJ flat out lied to Kimberly. Before they even got married, Kim had asked him, straight up, point blank, what are my wife duties gonna be? Am I gonna have to be in charge of cooking and cleaning and all the household chores? And TJ basically told her, no, you don't have to worry about any of that. I feel like you were hiding stuff from me. It it comes to me as disrespectful because I'm supposed to be your partner. It should have been done from my side, but maybe I didn't know much about the things. That's why we had a meeting with my mom. She's much clearer about things. So he blatantly lied to her. Okay? So I don't know how Kim is being so calm and she's not freaking the fork out because I would have done that. I would have ripped him a new a-hole. Like I would have dug my fingers in there and ripped it. Like I said, I don't know how she's remaining so calm and so pleasant, but I couldn't have done that. So kudos to Kim. And you know what else pissed me off? TJ was acting so innocent and so clueless when she was like, yeah, um, you totally hid these things from me. He was like, oh yeah, um, sorry. Excuse me? Sorry? No, 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 no. That's so messed up. Oh, I just felt so bad for Kim in that moment. Like, oh, like I'm getting, I'm getting pissed off right now for her. Kim is a whole different person. I mean, she's doing exceptionally well given everything that's been happening. She loves learning the customs, adapting, learning new traditions, Indian recipes. But then there's this one particular ritual that she just cannot get down with. It's a ritual where they bring in cow poop into the kitchen and they light it and they basically spread the smoke everywhere around the house because apparently it has antimicrobial properties in the cow dung that is supposed to like purify the kitchen or the house, I'm not sure. But basically her whole entire house is about to smell like cow shit. Now, this is what I really need to know. Is the cow dung purification ritual performed every single morning before they cook? Is this a daily thing? Or is this just like once in a lifetime thing after somebody gets married? I need details because the details are important. Because if this is a frequent thing, I can understand why Kim doesn't want to eat anything that comes out of that kitchen. Like if I were in that position, I would have to heavily rely on already made microwavable meals like factor meals because they're fresh, never frozen, and they're delivered right to your door. 
their delicious meals that a team of gourmet chefs created so you don't have to prep anything. You just pop it in the oven or the microwave and you can enjoy it. Plus, it's the holiday season! My favorite time of the year, but admittedly, it can get very stressful with how busy it gets. And the last thing I'm going to want to do is cook or grocery shop or prepare to cook or clean nothing. I don't want to do anything. And that's why Factor Meals are the best. Today, I had their Chipotle rubbed pork chop and it was so good. You just can't get this at the frozen aisle from the grocery store. You just can't. Listen, you're going to want to get ready for the holidays by getting Factor so that you can enjoy eating well without any of the hassle. They have a ton of options too, so you've got to check out their menu. And if they have what I had today, the Chipotle rubbed pork chop, you have to try it. It was so good. Head to Factor75.com or click the link in my bio and use code MYTHOUGHT50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Yes, that's half off your entire first box. All right, so check it out. And thank you Factor for sponsoring this video. Now I did lurk on Reddit to see if anybody was talking about this. And basically this isn't like a general Indian cultural thing. Like a lot of Indian people have never heard about this. They don't do this. So this is like a very niche, small community of people that believe in it and do it. So I guess TJ and his family are within that tiny, tiny community, okay? So as mother-in-law is spreading the cow shit aroma everywhere around the house, the brother so casually says, all right, it's time for the cow urine to be sprinkled everywhere. And he just happens to have a giant water bottle filled with cow piss. Like, where did he get that? Where did it come from? How did he get it in the bottle? Like, I have so many questions. And also, b judging by the, by the color of the cow urine, the cow needs some water, okay? He's thirsty as hell. Kim is just trying to take everything in. She doesn't know what's happening. She doesn't know why it's happening. And all of a sudden, mother-in-law takes a towel and wipes the excess cow shit that was on the table. <laughs> and so she just wipes it off and then takes that same towel and wipes the frying pan that they're gonna cook with. And Kim is like, whoa, whoa, wait, mother-in-law, you, you basically just put cow shit on the frying pan. Like, we're gonna eat cow shit. And mother-in-law's like, oh my god, you're so annoying. Just shut up. It's not a big deal. You're not gonna die from it. And Kim is like, TJ! TJ, get over here! And so TJ comes running downstairs and he's like, what's going on? And she tells him what happened. We're gonna eat cow shit. She just used this to wipe cow manure off the table and then cleaned it. It's not clean. And TJ's like, mom, please, like, why did you use the same towel? Da 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 da. And mom is so annoyed. She's like, shut the f up, this bitch wants to shut the f up. So then mother in law teaches Kimberly the recipe, and the recipe sounds delicious, okay? I would wanna eat that recipe, minus you know what. Listen, I don't want to shit on anyone's culture or beliefs. No pun intended, okay? <laughs> no, really though, I really don't mean to, but I, I have to agree with Kim. I would draw the line at cow shit or any type of shit. I don't care if the shit comes from... I don't freaking care. I don't want it. Now moving on to Mary and Brandon. Feeling sad for Mary was not on my bingo card. I felt bad. Did anybody else feel bad? Like, you have to understand that Mary can be a shitty person and also be in a shitty situation with Brandon. Like, multiple things can be true at once. I'm stressed because it's always me budgeting money and taking care of the debt. And he knows to himself that he's not helping me. She needs financial help. She needs money. Yes, I know he sent her money for so long to build that new house that they have, and that's wonderful. But now they're getting married. They're one unit, and she's pregnant with his child. Okay, she's doing her part to bring in money. She's selling all her personal belongings and whatever she can to bring in some cash and all he does is apparently yell at her or play video games all day long. They can't even pay their utility bill. Mary's grandmother asked Mary for some money for their electric bill that's due and they don't have any money. So like a normal person, Mary's panicking and Brandon won't help. I don't even understand if he understands how dire their situation is. Like, does he get it? Does he care? 
what's going on? Also, can we talk about how they've been fighting a lot in the past couple episodes, but we've never seen it? The only footage we got was from like a hidden camera view that Brandon wasn't aware of, so that leads me to believe that he might be purposely avoiding the cameras when he's not in a good mood. Mary's at a church. She's pregnant. She has nowhere else to go. Brandon won't talk to her. He's just playing video games. She's frustrated. She needs to like release her stress somewhere. So she's at the church and Brandon's mother finds her. And I just didn't expect Brandon's mom and Mary to get along. <laughs> That was a real shocker, and I also didn't expect Angela to be so nice, so I was very surprised, and I was also not expecting Mary to be so receptive of Angela's advice and j just her presence in general. I thought Mary was going to hate her and just give her hell, but they've been getting along. Also, I think it's saying something that Angela is very aware of Brandon's anger problems. Like, she said so herself. He needs to work on his anger and his video game playing. I feel like he might have an addiction to playing video games. The fact that his mom is very aware of these things makes it real. Like Mary's not exaggerating. She's not making it up. She's not being over dramatic. Like these issues are very real issues with Brandon. What I really appreciated about Angela was I felt like when she was talking to Mary and giving her advice, it wasn't in a way where um, it felt like Angela was trying to sway Mary into making a decision that would end up in Angela's favor, you know? And Mary even thanked her, and she even apologized to Brandon's mom for being a psycho-jealous bitch when uh, he was back in America. <laughs> like, she was like, yeah, I'm so sorry about that. I didn't know really what to expect when I came here, when it came to you. Honestly, I was expecting more, like, controlling jealousy because that's how you were when he was in America. Mm -hmm. I just want to say um, sorry for my overthinking before. What the hell is going on? Is Mary having like um, a moment where she's growing and maturing? At one point, she asked Mary if she can see herself living without Brandon. And Mary says no. She loves Brandon so much and she doesn't want to raise a child without him. But honestly, if um, Brandon just keeps going the way he's going right now, it's better if she raises the child by herself because she's going to do it anyway. She's going to raise her kid by herself anyway. And then if Brandon's there, she's going to raise him as well. Like she's going to have to take care of her husband and her kid. But damn, I just can't believe they're getting married the next day. Okay, they're getting married tomorrow and they have all these issues and I don't, I don't know. I want to get a scene of their fight. I want to see it. Maybe that's why Mary started live streaming because the show didn't show any of it. Moving on to Sarper and Shekinah. <laughs> I gotta say, I really wasn't looking forward to Shekinah and Sarper in the beginning. I just felt like they were going to be vapid and just fakey, fake, fake storylines. But I absolutely believe that they're a real couple and they actually love each other and that Sarper is actually that way. Like, he is reality TV gold. He says some out-of-pocket shit and it's funny because he's so serious. She's texting, she acts like a slut, you know? I mean, uh, bitch. I said, okay, I don't want to have I was thinking of one night stand with you. Either. I want to f*** you the, that night. All right, so Sarper still wants a kid, and he's going to make it his mission to try and change Shekinah's mind. He meets with his parents, who also tell him that they want a grandchild. And it's very important because he's the only child, so he's the only hope they have for <laughs> having a grandbaby. That's a lot of pressure. Apparently, he introduced Shekinah to his parents, and his parents were shocked because he never introduces any girlfriend to his parents. So they were like, wow, this must be really serious. And on a good note, they really liked her. They were like, oh, since she was American, I thought she was going to be cold and rude, but she was very pleasant. She was very sweet. So they all got along and everything went well, except for the baby part. His mom tells Sarper, listen, pregnancy is very difficult on a woman, but it's her job. And if she really loves you, she should make that sacrifice and give you a child.
That's a hard no for me, but whatever. That's their belief. They're entitled to it. Starper even said that he was planning on proposing to Shekinah, like he even was looking at rings to buy her, but now that she doesn't want a kid or she doesn't want any more kids, he doesn't see the point in getting married or proposing, like if they're not gonna have kids. Why I consider proposal if she doesn't want a kid? I have to reconsider everything. How about you get married because you love the person and you wanna spend the rest of your life with them? I mean, you can still have kids without getting married and you can get married and still not have kids. Like, what? Sarper's like, hmm, how do I convince here to have my child? So he takes her to a Turkish bathhouse, which looked incredible. I would love to go to one. And he's like, Shakina, I'm trying very hard to change my ways. You notice that, right, Shakina? Yeah, Sarpa, I really appreciate that. Well, my mother said directly that she wants grandchild, so I want you to reconsider. Oh my god, Sarpa, are you sure you really want a kid, or are you just trying to please your parents? Yes, Shekinah, that is the purpose of life. Well, Sophie's dad basically left me to raise her all by herself, and it was like so, so hard. I don't be like that, Shekinah. You don't even know me, babe. Oh my god, Sarpa, I'm like really sorry to be saying this, but like my ex-husband said the same exact things to me, and look what happened. Oh, Shakaina, we live together no problem until we get bored of each other, then what? Sarpa, what are you saying? There's no future if there's no kid? Like, there's a whole life ahead of us, okay? Oh no, it must be my karma for my 2500. Ew, Sarpa, I already told you never to mention your disgusting numbers in front of me again, Sarpa. Okay, Shakaina, whatever, Shakaina. Oh my god, Sarpa, you're being a total plastic from this conversation. Okay, Shekinah, you go, Shekinah, go, goodbye. Ooh, y'all, it pisses me off that all the pressure is on Shekinah. None of it is on Zarper. Like, bro, go check your 2500. You probably have a couple kids in there that you're not aware of. And if you see the preview in the next episode, he's a giant dickwad. He tells her to leave, like they're gonna break up, and he'll get over her in like two days. <laughs> What the hell? Like I said, he's such an a-hole, but he's such good TV. I mean, just the stuff that comes out of his mouth, his intense stick, Shakina. It's just so funny. We're gonna end this video with Danielle and Johan. Danielle and Johan are role-playing as Santa and Elf on the Shelf. Okay, that's an interesting role play, but Okay. Apparently they made up because Johan said that he genuinely thought that he could go into her account and take the money because they're married. And when she confronted him, he was so embarrassed and ashamed that he lied. Johan, mm -hmm. poor little baby. So Danielle forgave him. And for the holiday season, Johan wanted to get gifts for the local kids. So they started a toy drive online, quote, where people from the US buy gifts from the wish list and Johan and Danielle pay for the shipping costs. So are they buying toys from Timu for like a dollar and then selling it for like 35 bucks on their website and they give the toy to the kid and pocket the rest? So they're sitting by the Christmas tree. Oh, it's so romantic. And they're wrapping the gifts for all the little kids. And Danielle's like, by the way, Johan, I need your half of the rent. And he's like, I don't have the money. And she's like, what do you mean you don't have the money? We're paying 50-50. And so the fighting begins again. So long story short, he's not gonna pay for anything. Danielle is, or he, that's what he expects. Honestly, I've given you everything. I've paid for your Zumba classes. You don't even say thank you. You expect thank it. Thank you, de qué? No me has ayudado a mí en nada. Okay, I don't like Danielle, but that was mean. He basically tells her flat out, I'm not paying for anything. Even if I had the money, I wouldn't give you money. You are funding me. You haven't done anything for me. You promised me papers, an American visa, and you didn't give that to me. So no, I'm not doing anything. And I think finally she realized, like finally, that he was completely using her. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And so basically they are getting a divorce. Listen, we all knew this was coming, but I just didn't expect him to be such a jerk. Like he's so mean that I'm starting to feel bad for Danielle. 
Like, what the hell? Don't make me feel bad for Danielle. Don't do that. And in the preview for the next episode, it looks like he takes her dog, which is so messed up. Okay, that's like stealing someone's child. It's not even his dog. I don't know, did he pay for it? I know they're doing this, I'm taking whatever I paid for and you can have whatever you paid for. But like the dog? Like don't take her dog. I don't even like Danielle, but don't take the dog. Don't take the dog, that's so sad. By the way, I heard, okay, I was on Reddit. I do this thing where I wake up like in the middle of the night and I check my phone. It's such a bad habit that I need to break. But I was up at three o'clock in the morning and then I just decided to go on Reddit and see what's up. And I found this story of someone who brought dog to okay trigger warning it's a very sad traumatic story so if you don't want to listen to that then x out of this video okay but if you want to listen then you can keep watching so basically this woman took her dog to the department store nordstrom in particular and their nordstrom i don't know if every nordstrom has an escalator every nordstrom that i've been to does have escalators they have two floors do you know where i'm going with this yeah the the small dog got stuck in the escalator yeah. And the, the woman, the owner, obviously, she was screaming endlessly. Like, everybody heard her scream. It was like blood-curdling screams. And so basically, the whole uh, cleaning crew had to mop everything up. And I don't really know what happened afterwards. This person was, I think this person who posted on Reddit was at the Nordstrom's and they saw, I don't know if they saw, but they definitely heard everything. And I'm just like, oh my God, first of all, that is traumatic. I don't know how I could live on with that mental image in my head. Like I would need that electro therapy where they zap out memories, certain memories from your brain. I can't even talk straight thinking about the story. And for everyone who witnessed that, holy f That is traumatic. That's traumatic for everybody, especially the owner, but also the people who were there. Oh, oh, that's so tragic. I, uh, I, I mean, that really just like, it's just horrible. It's, it's horrible, devastating. So yeah. And with that, I'm going to end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. I'm sorry to end this on such a horrible note. Uh, but um, yeah, I love you. <laughs> Don't hate me. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!